morning to everyone. Good morning po. Amen. Sa mga na po this morning, we just give God our very best clap offering again. Amen and amen. So bago po tayo magkalimutan, ano pong celebrate natin tomorrow? Ano nakalimutan na? Ano celebrate tomorrow? Sige nga po, pakibati pong yung katabi na Advance Happy Independence Day. So, Happy Independence Day to everyone. So, tomorrow po yan. Ay, hindi ko alam kung may pasok pa o wala kasi hindi na po pumapasok. So, holiday tomorrow. Amen and amen. And today, before we proceed with God's Word, are you excited to hear God's Word today? Amen and amen. And I'm also excited to preach to you God's Word and welcome to our guests, to our visitors, and syempre sa ating mga family members as well who are in God's house. And before God's Word, bago po magpatuloy sa main message, uh, sino pong nakakaalam nung show po na ito? So may mga nakakaalala po ba niyan? May mga nag-apply po ba dyan? Nag-audition for the Pinoy Big Brother? So nung college po ko, yan po yung pinakauso. So ngayon, di ko na rin alam kung anong season na ngayon. So wala na akong balita dyan kung tapos na ba yung new season. But you know what? Sa, nakita ko po sa mga audition dito. Alam niyo po, there are so many unlikely candidates who would apply for this, mag audition po sila. Bakit po unlikely? Kasi sama-sama po sila, ang dami po nilang nakapila, they're falling in line. So some po dyan ay pang-artista talaga yung mukha, yung iba medyo sakto-sakto lang. Yung iba po ay very talented, sumayaw, mag-acting. Meron din po dyan, mga nakapila po na hindi po ganun kagaling. So in spite of that, they will fall in line kahit po nasa initan na po sila, nasa labas po sila ng studio. Pagsisiksikan po talaga na yung, nila yung sarili nila just to apply and be part of that audition. So sila po yung mga unlikely candidates. Meron naman po yung mga likely candidates, meaning po sila po ay may exposure na sa ibang mga commercial. So katulad po ng isang friend ko nung college, siya po ay may manager, exposed na po siya nung, sa mga commercials. So iba po yung pila nila. Direkta na po sila dun sa mga directors. So iba po yung pila ng unlikely candidates. Iba po po yung pila ng likely candidates. At dun sa mga likely candidates na magaganda na at magagaling, marami pa rin pong nakapila. So with this case, how are you gonna be noticed? Anong chances natin to be noticed? Yung mga unlikely candidates, they gave their best. Nandiyan sila, pumipila sila para po sila ay mapansin. Yung mga medyo may exposure na, sila din po ay nakapila. How in the world po ang chances po natin na tayo ay mapapansin kapag tayo po ay pumila dyan? And most of them prepared for that. Why? Because most of them are in need. They want to be part of the audition. They want to be part of Pinoy Big Brother. Bakit? Gusto po nilang sumikat. Gusto po nilang yumaman. They want to help their families makaahon sa kahirapan. So that's why they fall in line and they do their best. They prepare for it just to be noticed. Para lang po mapansin. And alam niyo po, in God's Word, in the book of Ruth, andyan din po, sino pong pinag-usapan natin last week? Anong book po ulit tayo last week? So kakabanggit ko lang, kaya alam na alam po natin. So, ang characters po natin doon, di ba? Si Naomi, si Ruth, and si Orpa. So, si, Ru, si Naomi, siya yung mother-in-law. Si Orpa, yung nang iwan sa kanila. At si Ruth, yung nag-stick sa kanila. And right now, at this moment, si Naomi and si Ruth are really in need. Kaya gusto nilang mapansin sila sa kanilang pinagdadaanan. So, if you have your Bibles with you, you could open it in, open it in Ruth chapter 1, verse 19. And it says here, now, the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? So, ironically, but ganun? Bakit, ano bang meron kay Naomi? Sino ba tong si Naomi? Why is the whole city excited? Uy, si Naomi, andito na, kakabalik lang ni Naomi. Everybody was glad, everybody was joyful. So napatanong ako, sino ba tong si Naomi? So to find out, si Naomi pala is a likely candidate. Isa po siya sa mga likely candidate na kilala-kilala po siya ng mga tao. Why? Sa, pala, sa pangalan pa lang Naomi, ang ganda na po, it means joy, it means my delight, it means the pleasantness of Jehovah, the pleasantness of God. So kung next time po tayo po yung magkakaanak, pwede po nating ipangalan na Naomi kasi she brings joy to the people, she brings joy to the whole family. So pangalan pa lang, joyful na. 
Pero hindi po doon nagtatapos yun. Ano po ba yung meron kay Naomi? What is her family connections? Ang family connections daw niya po, sabi sa aking pagbabasa. She belonged to one of the outstanding families in Israel. So ito pa lang si Naomi, hindi lang siya basta-bastang tao, hindi lang po siya galing sa normal family. Ang family pala ni Naomi is from a royal bloodline. Siya po pala ay nasa lineage ng mga kings. Kaya pala, si Naomi, when he went back to Bethlehem, in her own city, kilalang kilala po siya. Everybody knows her and everybody was joyful to know her. Kaya po, sino po yung, ano niya? Sino po yung mga daughters-in-law? Si Orpa and si Ruth. That's why they are these two people, Orpa and Ruth, are so privileged na maging part ng family ni Naomi kasi from a royal bloodline pala siya. But as we've talked about last week, sino po yun ang iwan na daughter-in-law niya? Si Orpa. Orpa left her. Nung, nung, si, Or, nung si Naomi ay full, nung si Naomi ay biniblessed, andun si Orpa. But when Naomi was already empty, wala na si Orpa. At ang natira na lang, only Ruth stayed with Naomi in fullness and in emptiness. Nandun si Ruth. Si Ruth lang ang nagstay. Kaya this is our title for today. The Book of Ruth and Her Loyal Heart. Kaya po pakitanong nga yung katabi mo, loyal ka ba? Ayan. So nakakabistuhan ngayon kung sino ang hindi loyal at ang loyal. So yan pong pag-uusapan natin, Her Loyal Heart. Kung sino kaya may loyal heart sa Church of God. So in verse 20 to 22, it says here, But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly to me. So dito talaga matche-check ang ating loyalty kapag when the world, when life turns bitter on us. Kung kailan po lahat po ay sablay, kung kailan po lahat tayo ay empty, kung kailan lahat ng nangyayari po sa atin ay pangit, dun matche-check kung ang puso talaga natin ay loyal sa isang tao or loyal sa ating Panginoon. And what did she say? I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. But do you call me Na- why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me. So, nung sinabi niya po yun, na siya po ay empty, siya po ay having a bitter life, wala na pong sumama sa kanya. Lahat po nang sumalubong sa kanya ay nagsiuwian. At nung nalaman po nila na siya ay bitter, siya ay empty, wala man lang nag-offer ng tulong, wala man lang nag-offer ng food, walang nag-offer ng pera, and only Ruth stayed with her. Si Ruth lang po ang naging loyal kay Naomi. And before we proceed with God's word, let us bow our heads and let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord God. We just invite your presence to be in this place. Lord God, we don't want to do this by might nor by power, but only by your Spirit. Lord God, it's your presence, Lord God, that will fill us up today. It's your presence, Lord God. It's your word who will speak to our hearts and our minds today. And Lord God, we just surrender everything to you. No other name will be lifted on high, not my name, not the church's name, Lord God, but only the name of Jesus Christ today. We love you so much, God. And today, Lord God, we claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout. Amen and amen. So let's give God our best clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what happened next in the story, it's a wonderful story. In verse 22, it says, So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the, the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. So it was harvest time in their season. At ngayon po, they are really... They're coming from famine, they are really in need, they are really hungry for food. Kaya lang na timing po sila that they are in a barley harvest. Ibig sabihin po, this is the time of reaping. This is the time of harvest, this is the time kung kailan po sila ani ng grain. So we could see right now that everybody was in the harvest field. Thousands of women, thousands of men, lahat po sila sabay-sabay na nagtatrabaho. At itong dalawa na to, nasakto na doon sila dumating na wala silang field, wala silang friend, wala silang family member. At matatanong po natin dito, how in the world would these two poor people get noticed in the middle of thousands and thousands of people? Paano kaya mapapansin ang kanilang situation? So ngayon, ang pag-uusapan po natin is... What awaits a loyal heart? 
Kung tayo ay loyal, kung ikaw ay naging loyal sa iyong siguro kaibigan, kung ikaw ay naging loyal sa iyong simbahan, or sa iyong pamilya, ano bang meron? Diba, tinanong po natin yan last week, hindi pa po natin nasasagot, bakit nagstay si Naomi? Why did she remain to be loyal? Ngayon po, sasagutin po ng Panginoon yan. So in chapter 2, ito na po, this is the next chapter of the book of Ruth, and it says here, this is the exciting part, it says, there was a relative, of Naomi's husband and a man of great wealth of the family of Elimelech, his name was Boaz. So, there was pala. So, gusto ko muna mag-focus dito sa there was. Ano bang meron dito sa there was? Kasi dito sinumulan yung chapter eh. There was someone. There was something. At saan po ba una nakita tong there was? Makikita po natin sa in the beginning. Pag binuksan po natin ang Bibles natin in the very first chapter, in the very first verse, sabi doon, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in the beginning, when the world was had no form, in the beginning, when you were not yet there, in the beginning, when man was not yet there, God was already there. Amen po ba doon? God was already there who was in control of everything. And it says here, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So nakita na po ni God ang situation. The earth was without form, it's total darkness, there's no food, there's nothing here. Pero ini-expect niya kasi, in one of these days, dadating ka sa mundo na yan. In one of these days, I am gonna create man in this world. At ayoko na ito ang dadat na ng aking anak. Ayoko na ang dadat na ng aking anak, ang aking creation, human, is total darkness and emptiness and without form. Kaya po, nung nakita niya po yung situation, God saw the need, God saw everything that's happening, sabi niya, then God said, let there be light. And ano sabi doon? There was light. So yan din po ang sinasabi ng Painon sa ating ngayon, even before you came here, ito na, There was everything prepared for you by the Lord. Amen po ba doon? Pwede ba natin palapangan si Lord for that? There was everything prepared for you. Hindi pa dumadating yung situation mo. Hindi ka pa dumadating. Hindi ka pa pinapanganak sa mundo. There was everything already prepared for you by the Lord. At sino ba itong prepare ni Lord para kay Ruth? This is the light that God has for Ruth. At ang pangalan niya po ay si Boaz. At sino daw tong si Boaz? You know what? Boaz daw is a man of great wealth. So siya po ay mayaman, at hindi lang po siya mayaman, siya rin po ay isa sa mga landowners of that time. So kasi po may mga pag-aari po yung mga fields, 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 at isa pong malaking field doon, si Boaz po yung may-ari. At kung siya po yung may-ari noon, he is really a likely candidate to be your husband. So likely candidate siya para kay Ruth, likely candidate siya sa thousands of women who were in the field to be her husband. Maging husband po nila si Boaz. So ito po pala yung binigay ni ng Panginoon, ang hinanda ng Panginoon para sa kay Ruth. Pero in the next verse, alam niyo po, wala pa pong alam si Ruth about Boaz. Wala pa pong alam si Ruth that there's this man named Boaz. Pero ito na po yung ginawa ni Ruth. In verse 2 to 3, it says, So Ruth, the Wobobites, said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him whose sight I may find favor. So kung sino man ay may pag-aari ng land doon, kung sino man lalaki ang pwedeng tumulong sa akin, sige, punta lang ako doon, Naomi. Pwede ba akong pumunta? Wala akong ina-expect na tutulong sa akin. I'm just gonna go there. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Even Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. So what happened here is, even before na nag-decide si Ruth to, to move out, to go to the field, even before na si Ruth po ay nakakuha ng approval to go to the field, even before Ruth had that, made that first step, ano pong binigay na ni Lord? There was everything prepared for you by the Lord. So ngayon po, even before na kung for sure may mga pinagdadaanan po tayo sa buhay ngayon, And even before na dumating pa yung karamdaman mo, even before that you're going through these tough times already, this is what God is telling you right now. There was everything prepared for you by the Lord already. Amen? 
Sige, let's give God the highest praise. And who would have thought na hinanda na pala ng Panginoon yan? Who would have thought na ito pala yung work ng Panginoon? So yan po ay for those who are loyal in their hearts. For those who did not quit like the heart of Ruth. At pag tayo po, what awaits a loyal heart? They experience that there was power. The power of there was. Na may nakahanda na pala ang Panginoon para sa atin, kailangan na lang natin puntahan at i-claim natin para sa ating buhay. Amen? Amen and amen. So what happened next in verse 3, it says here, And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. So suddenly, out of nowhere, sa dami ng may mga lupa doon, how in the world na doon pa siya nag-end up kay Boaz? Ang dami namang ibang mga lalaki na pwede siya mag-end up. Bakit kay Boaz? Sa field pa ni Boaz siya nag-end up. At hindi lang po yun, in the next verse it says, Now, behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. So out of nowhere then, kung kailan po nandun si Ruth sa field ni Boaz, out of nowhere, how in the world na dun din, in the same time, in the same place, dun din dumating si Boaz. Wow, di ba? Wow. Now behold, talagang kumilos pala ang Panginoon sa mga panahon na to. And not only that, then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? So out of the thousands of women, out of the thousands of people na nandun sa field, how in the world na mapapansin niya si Ruth? Bakit si Ruth? At yan po ang sinasabi ng Panginoon sa ating in, when God moves, now behold, now behold. Why? Because when God moves, when God moves in your life, when God moves in your heart, God will make sure you end up where He wants you to be. Amen po ba dun? God will make sure you end up where He wants you to be. Sige, nagpalpak-palpak uh, na tayo sa buhay. Nagkasira-sira na yung buhay. Uh, dami na natin pinagdaanan. Pero when God moves in your life, you will end up, still end up where God wants you to be. Amen po ba dun? Can we just give God your very best clap offering for that? And when you're in His target spot, when you're already in position, anong gagawin sa, sa iyo ng Panginoon? He will make sure that you are noticed. Pakisabi nga sa katabi mo, you are noticed. So di ba, minsan kasi hindi na, feeling natin, hindi tayo napapansin. Dami-dami tao, pero pag kumilos ang Panginoon sa buhay mo, He will make sure you are noticed. Kaya lang sa buhay po ni Ruth, noticeable ba tong si Ruth? Kapansin-pansin ba tong si Ruth? Bakit? Sino ba tong si Ruth? You know what? Ruth, sino ba si Ruth? She is a poor woman. So compared to Boaz, ito si Ruth. Ruth, a poor woman, she came from famine. They came from a hard time. They came from a difficult time. They came from a great testing. They came from a great transition na hindi pa sila nakaka-cope up. Kaya po, she's a poor woman. And dahil po dyan, ano pong ginawa niya? Siya po ay isang gleaner. So kung matatandaan po natin yung last month's preaching po natin, ano pong ibig sabihin ng gleaner? So ang isang gleaner ay isa pong mas mababa pa sa harvester. Kasi yung mga nag-harvest, employed sila ng landowner. Talaga, taga-ani sila. At may nakukuha sila doon, yung ani nila, may commission sila, may allowance sila from that. Pero ang gleaner, kung ano lang po yung nahulog sa lupa, yun lang ang pwede nilang kunin. Yun lang, sila po ay pulube in the harvest field tagahingi lang po sila kung ano yung tira, ano yung madumi, ano yung nahulog sa ground. So yan po si Ruth, isa po siyang pulube, just a gleaner. It, it makes her an unlikely candidate. So bakit? Bakit papansinin Boaz si Ruth? Isang rich man, isang landowner, isang hasindero, a likely bachelor na nagahanap ng kanyang mga kasama forever. How in the world napapansinin niya si Ruth? Isang poor woman, isang pulube, isang unlikely candidate na bakit mo papansin ng isang tao na yan? Pero bakit? Bakit siya pinansin? In verse 6, it says, So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi 
from the country of Moab. So ang napansin po sa kanya, hindi po yung pagkahirap ng buhay niya. Ang napansin po sa kanya, hindi yung pagiging pulubi niya. Hindi po napansin sa kanya yung pagiging unlikely candidate niya. Ang napansin po sa kanya is her heart. The Moabite's woman's heart na who stick close to Naomi in fullness and in emptiness. May nakakakita ng loyal heart ni Naomi, ay ni, ni Ruth. At ano po, ano po ba tong loyal heart ni Ruth in verse 11? And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. So, she remained even without provision. Kasi po, namulubi ni sa Naomi, dati po siyang royal bloodline from a king's line. Ngayon, you still remain even without provision. Kahit wala ka nang mahihita kay Naomi, you still stayed. Wow! Na-amaze po si Boaz about that. And how have you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth? So she has no more wall of hope. Kasi po, pag tayo po ay dumadaan sa problema, kapag tayo po ay nagkakasakit, sino po ang tatakbuhan natin? Si mama at si papa. Di ba? Tatakbo po tayo sa kanila when we're going through tough times, when we're going through difficult times, pag tayo may sakit, sasan- may sasandalan tayo of hope. Pero this time, Ruth, hindi niya kasama ang kanyang magulang, wala siyang kahit sino man masasandalan. And lastly, yung pwede niyang sandalan na si Naomi, ano sabi dito, and have come to a people whom you did not know before. Hindi niya alam ang future niya. Her future is uncertain. Hindi niya alam anong mangyari kay Naomi. Hindi niya alam kung yung mga tao ni Naomi ay mabibless siya. She has no idea of it. At napansin ni Boaz yun. And this is what God is telling right now. There's someone who notices what you're going through today. Amen po ba doon? Sarap po ba sa, sa puso natin yun? Amen po ba doon? That there's someone who notices what you're going through today. Kasi minsan, ang sakit kapag wala nakakapansin sa atin. Eh. Ang sakit kapag naging loyal na tayo, ito yung mga pinagdadaanan natin sa buhay, pero walang makakapansin. Pero ang sarap sa feeling that there's someone who notices all that you're going through today. Pakisabi nga sa katabi mo, may nakakapansin sa'yo. Pakitap nga yan sa balikat na okay lang yan. May nakakapansin sa'yo. So, simbaka ulit next Sunday. So, yan po. Someone notices you today. At ang maganda po, ano po ba ang meron sa loyal heart, hindi ka lang papansinin. Hindi po natatapos doon. Pero ang bibigay sa'yo is a full reward. So, pakitapit nga yung katabi mo ulit. Uy, may reward daw. Gising ka na. Kasi medyo natutulog. Ito may reward. May makukuha tayo ngayon. You have a reward today. So bawal matulog. So ano daw po yung reward na ibibigay dito? In verse 8 to 9, it says here, Then Boaz said to Ruth, You will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean in another field. No, go from here, but stay close by young, my young women. So sabi ni Boaz kay Ruth, Oh, dito ka na lang. Huwag ka na maghanap ng ibang field. Huwag ka na mahiya sa akin. Dito ka na lang sa field ko. Kasi sa ibang field, pwede ka ma-reject. Sa ibang field, pwede kang mabastos. Sa ibang field, baka awayin ka doon, i-persecute ka. Hindi, dito ka na lang. Stay here in my field. At kami nang bahala sa iyo. And the next verse says, Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. Do what you want. Get everything you want. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? Huwag ka matakot. Walang gagalaw sa'yo dito. Akong bahala sa'yo. Yung mga tao ko, sinabihan ko na yan. Huwag kang gagalawin. Ibigay ang lahat ng kailangan mo. At hindi pa po nagtapos doon. And when you are thirsty, sabi ni Boaz, Ruth, just go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. In this field, everything is well provided for. All the food, all the water, Everything you need is here. There was everything here. At kailangan mo lang humingi ka lang. Kumuha ka lang. Get whatever you want. And it is yours. At ano po ba yung sinasabi dito ni Boaz? Ano po bang binabalik ni, 
ni Boaz dito. Nakita po natin kung ano yung mga naging nawala kay Ruth dahil sa kanyang pag-follow blindlessly. Anong binalik sa kanya? He was give, she was given this full provision sa lahat ng emptiness po nila. Emptiness emotionally, emptiness spiritually, emptiness financially. Anong binalik sa kanya ni Boaz? Full provision. Everything you need. And not only that, I give you full hope. You don't need to be afraid anymore. You don't need to think of your security anymore. There's hope here. And not only that, a full future will be restored to your life. Kasi wala na eh. Sira na yung future ni, ni Ruth eh. Hindi na siya magkakaasawa eh. Wala nang, wala nang mangyayari kay Naomi. Pero ito, binigyan siya ng bagong kinabukasan. Yan ang inoffer kay Ruth. Grabe po, no? At ito pong sinasabi ni Lord sa ating ngayon. In verse 12, it says, The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given by you, the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. So this is what you have when you have a loyal heart. You get to experience that reward for you by the Lord. Amen po ba doon? Pwede ba natin palapakan si Lord for that? Na may nakakakita pala nung pinagdadaanan mo ngayon. Pero mahirap kasi maging loyal. Tama po ba yun? Mahirap po maging loyal. Tawa kayo ah. Parang hirap na hirap kayo maging loyal ah. So hirap talaga maging loyal. Especially when you're going through these things. When you're going through these transitions in life. When you just came out from famine and you're a poor woman, when you're a poor man, you're just a gleaner, isa ka lang pulube, you have no right, you have no authority, you have no power, you're an unlikely candidate, you think no one's gonna notice you. In these moments, it's so hard to be loyal. Ang hirap to stay the path, it's hirap to stay the course, hirap to fight for what we have right now. Hirap eh. At ang mas mahirap pa doon na feeling natin walang nakakapansin sa atin. Walang nakakapansin sa pinagdadaanan natin. Walang nakakapansin sa pinaglalaban natin. We don't know. Kung may nakakapansin o wala. Ang hirap to be loyal, straight loyal. Pero ito po yung mensahe ng Panginoon sa atin ngayon. Nakikita po natin sa 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. And it says here, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. God is here. His eyes are wide open. He is a God who sees what you're going through. His eyes are all around, circling this whole earth. And what did he say? To show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Ano pong sinasabi ng Painan ngayon? Do not be afraid that you are not noticed. Do not fear na baka walang nakakapansin sa'yo. Do not be insecure. Huwag kang mag-worry na walang nakakapansin sa'yo ngayon. Walang nakakanotice sa'yo ngayon. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord is looking for you today. Ang mata ng Panginoon, ikaw mismo ang tinatarget na tignan for those who continuously have and carry that loyal heart in their lives. So kung ikaw yung tao na yun na nagpaka-loyal for so many years, huwag ka mag-alala. Hinahanap ka ng Panginoon ngayon. And He's telling you. He's telling you right now. Huwag ka mag-alala kung may anong matatanggap mo, mayroon mang nag-aawit sa'yo, wala. Don't worry. Dahil pag nahanap kita, pag nakita kita ngayon, sabi sa'yo ng Panginoon, I am your reward. I am. The great I am. He is your great reward. And that great I am, He's the great I am who will be your provider. He's the great I am who will be your source of hope. He's the great I am who will give you a good and wonderful future in your life today. Amen po ba doon? Sige po, palakpangan po natin ang ating Panginoon. 
So if that's you, keep your loyal heart. Sige lang. Carry on. Move on in this battle. Then hinahanap ka ng Panginoon. At pag nahanap ka niya, He will surely reward you today. And today we're gonna have an altar call as the worship team will be coming here in front. And we're gonna have two altar calls today. On my right, are for those who has been having that loyal heart for so many years. Naging loyal tayo sa kaibigan natin, naging loyal tayo sa pamilya natin, halos hindi na tayo nag-asawa para lang ma-support yung ating pamilya. Sa mga naging loyal sa simbahan, sa mga naging loyal sa trabaho na hindi sinaraan ng kanilang boss kahit yung lahat ng tao ay uh, nanira na sa kanilang uh, sa business. Pero sa lahat ng ginawa natin, parang niminsan hindi tayo napansin. Ah. Sige, sana nga mapansin eh. Di ba? Okay na mapansin. Pero niminsan hindi rin tayo na reward. At kung ikaw yun, to those loyal hearts today, na ganun ang nararamdaman, God is inviting you to come here on my right. And today is the day that you claim your reward. Kasi nandito ang Panginoon at kanina ka pa niya hinahanap for you to be rewarded today. And on my left, for those who said, I've been disloyal to my wife, I've been disloyal to my husband, I've been disloyal to my friend, I've been disloyal sa aking buhay, I've been, I've been disloyal to God. At wala po nakakahiya doon. Kasi tao lang po tayo. Even me, I've been disloyal. Pero kung ikaw yung nagsasabi, Lord, gusto ko naman maramdaman yung there was power mo, that everything is well provided for me. Lord, gusto ko naman, Lord, mapansin ako. Buong buhay ko, tinray ko mapansin, tinray ko sumikat, pero nung naabot ko yun, parang kulang pa rin. Lord, gusto ko maramdaman yung full reward. At ikaw pala yun, yung full reward sa buhay ko. Dami kong hinanap, dami kong tinray. Pero si Lord lang pala ang kasagutan for me to experience the fullness of life. And if that's you, I will invite you to come here in my left and receive your loyal heart today. So if that's you today as the worship team sings this song, to those who have been loyal hearts, come to my right and receive your reward. If you want a loyal heart today, come here to my left and we will pray for you. Hallelujah. Jesus. For those who are in on my right, God sees what you went through today. God sees what you're going through today. God sees what you've done. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And He notices your heart. He notices your tears. He notices that in spite of what you've been through, in spite that life turned bitter on you, He notices your heart. He sees your heart. And He's here to reward you today. So for those who are in on my right here, can you raise up your hands to the Lord and pray this prayer with me. Lord God Almighty, say this prayer with me. Lord God, Lord God, here's my life. Here's my life. Thank you, Lord. For sustaining, me, for sustaining me, for allowing me to endure, for allowing me to endure all those testings, testings those, challenges, those challenges, those trials, those trials. And it's still you, it's still you who have kept my heart, have kept my heart loyal, to you. loyal to you. I have nothing to boast. I have nothing to boast. Only you, Lord Jesus. And today, and today, I know you see me. I know you see, me. I know you see my heart. Today, and today, I claim my reward, your full provision, your full hope, and your full future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those who came here on my left, could you raise up your hands to God? And this is an act of surrender. Telling God, my old self is done, my disloyal heart is done, I'm a new creation. 
It's a new beginning for me. And today, Lord, I want to be noticed. Not by men, not just by my friends or family, but I want you, God alone, notice me. Because only you, God, could see past my physical appearance. Only you, God, could see past my brokenness. Only you could see past my outside appearance. Only you, God, could see my heart. And could you pray this prayer with me from the bottom of your heart? Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, here's my life. Here's my life. Sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. For being disloyal. For being disloyal. To you alone. To you alone. Sorry for this heart. Sorry for this heart. And today. And today. I ask for you. I ask for you to break it. To break it. I surrender it to you. I surrender it to you. And it is broken today. I allow you to mold it, to mold, to fix it, to fix, it, to repair it, to repair it, to turn it, to turn it into a loyal heart, into a loyal heart. Here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord. And I claim, and I claim from this day forward, from this day forward, I'm gonna be loyal to you. I'm gonna be loyal today, to today, today, and forever, Mark. Hallelujah. We just give God our very best clap off. Today is a victorious day. Today, lives are changed, and I believe everyone experienced Jesus Christ. And before we go, let us lift up our tithes and offering. And God sees your loyal heart also in giving. God sees how loyal you've been in spite of running empty. God sees your heart, your giving heart, to serve God and give to Him. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. Thank you for our tithes and offering. Lord God, we give this to you loyally, Lord God. Lord God, pwedeng hindi ito mapansin ng aming mga kapamilya, mga kapatid, kaibigan. Pero Lord, ito ay napapansin mo, Lord God. At ito po ay binibigay namin sa iyo, hindi namin ito dinadaya. We give to you fully what you, what belongs to you. And we give it to you, Lord God, with all our hearts, God. With pure joy, with a cheerful heart. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for those who have remained loyal to you. And I believe today they experience you, they receive your word. And Lord God, thank you for taking notice of us. Thank you for taking notice of them. For so many years they've been loyal. And I believe today they've truly claimed their reward because finally you found them and you saw them. And blessing, Lord God, will come upon their lives. Hallelujah, Lord. And for them, Lord God, who wants a loyal heart, I believe, Lord God, this is the turn around for their lives. This is a moment of change. This is their turning point, Lord. And I believe today, they will never be the same again because you will notice them, you will see them, and you will bless them abundantly. Thank you, Lord God, for this victorious day. Thank you for your wonderful presence. Thank you, Lord God, for your provision of your word. This is not my word, Lord God. This is your word. And only the name of Jesus Christ will be lifted on high. We love you so much, God. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless everybody. Go in peace and have a blessed day. And amen.